The name's Bond. I was always the rebel, yes, uh, and getting into trouble before, uh, because of it. James Bond. James Bond hadn't been invented then. The, the James Bond books or the novels only came in in the mid to late 50s. Um, so there were no rivals to me before James Bond came on the scene. Huh? As I walked home last night, I saw a lone fox dancing in the bright moonlight. I stood and watched, then took the low road, knowing the night was his by right. Sometimes, when words ring true, I'm like a lone fox dancing in the morning dew. Time has sort of swept past me and perhaps living in the mountains, you don't notice it. And it was only when I'd finished writing this memoir <coughs> that, I, that I realized that I'd been around a long time <laughs> and that, that, I, that I was actually quite old. Sometimes it doesn't occur to you, you know, unless you're feeling pretty miserable or not well. So I grew up during the Nehru years. Now my stories are more cheerful in, now that I'm old and find life a bit ridiculous. But um, the stories I wrote when I was in my 20s and 30s, th those were the ones that had that rather melancholy um, uh, um, and sometimes sad endings. I don't know why, I was going through a period of perhaps of um, love is a sad song and um, romances that never <laughs> came to fruition. Mm? Uh, they, they were the theme of a lot of early stories in my 20s. Maybe it was from seeing films like Brief Encounter and Casablanca. I am a very visual writer and also I have a, a good memory for places and um, faces and, and, and things, you know. Um, so uh, it's not difficult for me to perhaps conjure up a scene. Mm -hmm. Also, as, as the writer Anais Nidin said once, that when you're writing about the past in, in, a, in a reminiscence, in a, in a memoir, uh, in autobiography, or in, even in a story where you bring yourself in, you're in a way living twice over because I'm recreating that particular period of my life. So I'm in a way enjoying myself in going, going through the experience again. Um, and um, in doing so, perhaps uh, um, I, I try to bring to life whatever I can remember well. Sometimes be, you know, obviously get mistaken for a foreigner or something. And many years back, into a hotel near the airport in Delhi, and they asked me where we would come from, sir, and uh, uh, when did you come to India? Um, and I said I came to India in May 1934 by stock. <laughs> was, but at once anybody knew, anyone who known me always. Um, accept, accepted me as, as an Indian because, to tell you the truth, I can't pass for anything else. Um, uh, I, I'm not even eligible to be uh, a citizen of the UK or any other country. Um, 
I can only be an Indian citizen uh, and quite happy to be one. I think I'm, uh, I have been very lucky over the years um, in that I've managed to, to do the things I set out to do, which was to, to write and, and also to make a living from it um, and, to, and to be um, accepted as a fairly decent writer, um, to, to live the sort of life I wanted to live, I've been able to live in the in the hills in the mountains i've i've uh, i've had a family grow around me an adopted family uh, so i'm well looked after um, and uh, well i'm you could say i'm a writer without complaints or without regrets there have been times of course when it's been tough or, uh, but you need that too <laughs> I won't sit down to write a story or an, even an essay or any, anything of any length unless I've already visualized it. So in a way I've written it in my head from beginning to end. The characters are there the, the, and uh, um, I know what I'm going to put down. So then writing it is really a matter of putting it into words and, and, uh, um, and, and making it interesting. And, and using words to the best possible effect. Um, but I've already written the story in my head. So that's why I always, when other writers or young writers ask me how to deal with writer's block, I, I tell them, write the story in your head first, huh? and then it'll be easy for you to put it down in words. Nowadays, I don't watch movies. I, I, I get a bit bored with the sort of movies that often get shown on television. So I, I did grow up though on movies, and those were the movies of the 19, mostly black and white, of the 1940s, because those were movies very often based on literary works. A lot of famous books were filmed, books, novels by Somerset Maugham or Hemingway or Daphne du Maurier, or you could think of so many authors. Mm whose works were filmed, and filmed pretty well at times. I would like to act as a, maybe something like a villain or something, you know. They're like Sidney Greenstreet and the Maltese Falcon, you know, that's a classic going back to the 40s, yes. James Bond hadn't been invented then. The, the James Bond books or the novels only came in in the mid to late 50s. Um, so there were no rivals to me before James Bond came on the scene. So I think it was about the late 50s, the first Bond film. And it was the films that made him famous, not so much the books. Even today, no one reads those books. I did have an uncle called James Bond. Hmm? Um, uh, and he was a dentist. Hmm? And um, he, his grave is here in the Missouri Cemetery in the old one. He was in the, a dentist in, the, in the, those, the old days in the survey of India. And I wrote long afterwards, of course, in recent, an epitaph for him, saying, for his grave, saying, Stranger, approach this spot with gravity. James Bond is filling his last cavity. <laughs> um, so my dentist uncle got an epitaph, but, but he wasn't a secret agent. <laughs> it's only in the last few years that you could say I've become a recognizable face uh, and figure, but <laughs> the the trouble is I get a lot of uh, disturbance now from uh, uh, tourists and visitors who come at odd times. Oh, Lando was totally um, uh, unvisited, you might say, hmm? uh, 10, 15 years back. Hmm? Hmm? And, you know, knocking at the door, 
wanting to see me um, and at, uh, you know, maybe early in the morning or while I'm working or sleeping. The worst time is when I'm sleeping. Well, maybe I'm at fault by writing about, writing so much about it. Hmm? But, uh, but now it's, it's, it's a destination. Hmm? So you get, you know, carloads of people right? and I hear from my bedroom horns hooting at, at all hours because I'm <coughs> right on just above the road. Then I'm very grumpy, of course. Huh? <laughs> I rejected the glamour and, and that glamour followed me, in a way, <laughs> to the Queen of Hills. <laughs> I used to go on long walks in the hills. Well, it was, as a boy in Dehradun, I would go for long bicycle rides. <laughs> yeah, I missed the old bicycles. But up in the hills, of course, bicycles wobble around a lot and you might tumble down huh, down a hill slope. So walking is the best thing. And I, and I used to walk and trek a lot, a good deal, when I was younger. Um, and uh, even in even in towns, I used to walk a lot, in Delhi and in uh, London, Dehradun. And in fact, in Dehradun, people used to call me the road inspector. I didn't have close family ties, you could say, right from a fairly early, early age. Um, that's why maybe I've, I've built up a family around me, uh, in a way to compensate uh, for that uh, lack of family feeling that, uh, in, in my youth. I was just going to write about food, in fact, I thought. Um, I must do a piece on food eating. <laughs> so, and uh, actually, I'm, uh, my tastes in food are very simple. Um, only the other day, uh, at home, when Rakesh and Veena were going out for the day, they said, what can we bring you f for lunch today? Because hmm? they were going to town, and I wasn't. And I thought about it, and then I said, I know what I want. Hmm? Chole Pature. Hmm? <laughs> and I hadn't had it for, for, for months, years maybe. So they brought me Chole Pature and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So today if you ask me what is my favorite dish, I'll say Chole Pature. But tomorrow it might be something different. Huh? Last night I dreamt that I have it's totally broke, that I have nothing, no money left. Uh, you know, it's, the, the bank was empty too, and I was told that. Uh, and um, fortunately I woke up before bills started being presented. But I suppose it was, I get these, it goes back to a, uh, early days when I had that feeling of insecurity. Hmm? Um, and it sometimes comes out in dreams still. Well, the room on the roof being the first, the first um, major work that I did, um, is close to my heart because it, because I took, I made, took a lot of trouble over it, and it, it, I, it wasn't published instantly. You know, it took me time to get a publisher. I wrote two or three drafts. So, and I've never changed it because it, although there are in it perhaps errors and infelicities, but. It represented me as I was then. So it's a, bo a book about adolescence, by an adolescent. So I've never even changed a word or a comma or a semicolon. And looking at it the other day, briefly glancing through, I said, my goodness, I was obsessed with semicolons. I used to use a lot of them, now I don't. <laughs> but um, so there you are, but it's, so it's, it's still very special for me. And then other, sometimes certain short stories, The Blue Umbrella, uh, because the, it, the children in it were real children too. I used to see them playing on the, the Tiri Road um, when I lived uh, back uh, in, in near the forest back in the 19. That was published in about 19 in the 70s. Um, so there are stories uh, sometimes that have a special place. 
And I think the one I, that was published last year, Looking for the Rainbow, it was a children's book, <coughs> which was <coughs> um, about the two years I spent with my <coughs> father in New Delhi uh, during World War II. If I get up at uh, 7 or 8 and before breakfast for an hour or so I can write, um, then I get a bit drowsy midday, perhaps because I, I take a, um, a blood pressure tablet and that I think makes me a little drowsy, so I usually take a nap for an hour or two around midday. But then in, I come to life again in the afternoon, so sometimes I do some writing in the afternoon or early evening and if in the middle of the night I get a wake up with a bright idea i'll put on the light get my notebook out and put it put it down so that I've, it's not forgotten of course by daylight next day it may not seem so brilliant anyway <laughs> but um this and i put down dreams too i i I'll always record what what i remember of dreams <laughs> I myself didn't go to college hmm, or university and um, the, the idea of um, inst uh, teaching or instructing you know uh, students uh, I wouldn't be a good teacher no uh, and <coughs> uh, I don't think so um, I'd rather leave them to do whatever they want to do uh, a, a lady teacher <coughs> some years ago asked wanted to take the morning off and she asked me to take charge of her class uh, for the morning. It was small boys actually um, and by by about noon there was a riot going on uh, because they were you know throwing chalk at each other and dusters and singing and dancing and the principal came along and thank you Mr. Bond for all the trouble you've taken you can go home now. <laughs> so, I don't think you see I'm not a disciplinarian in any way so I couldn't handle large numbers of students who want to do different things let them do it. <laughs> you know, I've sort of um, learned to live with whatever whatever sort of um, uh, conditions apply. The time they were together, I was very small, which would have been in Jamnagar, where the first six years of my life was spent. <coughs> my father was then working for the Jamsab and started a small school. I think they were close, closer together then than uh, at any other time. Perhaps spent as a small boy more time with my father later on because uh, uh, they had separated by the time I was eight years old. Mm. Uh, maybe their marriage was a mistake, a mistake that resulted in me coming on the scene, <laughs> in a way. Huh? It's been a good life to live. There have been times when it's been a bit difficult. Um, but no, I think I've been very fortunate by and large mm. and uh, uh, to be able to live the kind of life uh, I wanted to live and being free to write any, all that I want to write, to read as much as I want to read, to live with the kinds of people I want to live with and uh, uh, can't complain. <laughs> I'm happy that I've been able to do so much um, and that I haven't sort of uh, got into a rut or um, lost my ability to write a decent story or essay and, um, and that I'm doing better now than at any other time in my life too and, and I have uh, many young readers and it will be nice if a few things continue to be read after I've gone. Um, but I wouldn't know about it anyway. But um, but I'm uh, satisfied with with what I've done, mm. um, and uh, hope to do a little more. Mm.